Well, hi there, everyone. I've got another installment of my side in a jar recipe series. This one for butternut squash risotto. So you are gonna start with arborio rice. That's a specialty kind of rice. And um, that's just how you make risotto. And then you put in there our butternut squash. I've got some onions in there and a little Parmesan cheese and then just some seasoning. So it's not a lot of ingredients. It will come together really fast because it's not um, too much to put into the jar. You're gonna start with a pint-sized jar and to that jar, you're gonna add a cup of the arborio rice. It's this little fat grain of rice and it makes for a very creamy end product. So that's how you make risotto. Now I put about two thirds of a cup, maybe three quarters of a cup of butternut squash in there. You can try to get up to a cup of the squash. Mine were these really kind of big chunky pieces um, and then yeah try to squish it down a bit to be able to fit the other ingredients in there. So I've got a tablespoon of our chopped onions and then an additional tablespoon of our green onions and a tablespoon of our Parmesan cheese. If you don't have any of those things you can always add that kind of fresh when you go to make it. And then I've got some of our freeze-dried garlic. That is sage right there. I think sage pairs really nicely with the butternut squash. And then that's half a tablespoon of our chicken bouillon powder. And then you're just gonna add some seasonings. I put in salt and pepper and a dash of cayenne. I highly recommend some lemon powder. I think the lemon powder is great in there. If you have Thrive Life lemon powder, you can just put a teaspoon of that or maybe a packet of that true lemon. And that's about it. You seal it up. This should stay good on your shelf for it just as long as your rice stays good, which I would think it would be fine for months or even years on your pantry shelf. The idea is this recipe is kind of like a guide. You can use this type of recipe for different flavor combinations. If you don't want to do butternut squash and sage, then do mushroom and thyme, or you could do asparagus and lemon. So when you go to prepare it, if you don't have a instant pot, then you're going to, you can totally make this on the stovetop in a skillet, but you'll, you'll need to look up recipe instructions for making risotto on the, on the stovetop. This recipe is specifically for an instant pot. You are going to utilize this saute function on your instant pot. There's a saute button on the front and you definitely need it for this recipe. You're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil and then a tablespoon of butter. And basically you're just going to melt that butter in there and kind of coat the bottom of the pan with the oil. When you dump the contents of your jar in there, you're going to need to move quickly here, okay? All I'm wanting you to do is to coat those rice grains with the oil. But your garlic will burn if you don't almost immediately add your water. So before you do that, make sure you have two and a half cups of water ready to be poured in. Yeah, you want to do that because you don't want to burn the garlic. If the garlic burns, it turns bitter and it kind of ruins the dish. So you can skip that whole step if you're uncomfortable with it. But I, I like to give the uh, Arborio rice grains a little bit of a coat in the oil. I think it improves the flavor. But anyway, that saute function is what's going to help this dish cook so quickly in your Instant Pot. You're going to bring everything to a boil before you use the pressure cooker function, right? So everything is up to a boil, you've given it a stir. Now close it. You'll want to turn off the saute function and then find the manual button, hit manual and make sure it's set for five minutes. Okay. 
it will eventually turn on make sure it's closed so it reaches the pressure it will go for five minutes and then just do a natural release for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes of natural release and I did mine 13 I think and there just wasn't any pressure left to release really in there so it's done that's what it looks like the squash should be tender the rice should be tender the liquid should it should be cooked into the dish that's how everything gets tender and then I like to add some mascarpone cheese it's very similar to cream cheese. If you don't have mascarpone, you could add cream cheese to this. I think that it adds some really nice richness to it, some, I guess, creaminess to it. And if you don't have mascarpone or cream cheese, you could always add some more parm. And I always suggest taste it, see what it needs. I ended up adding some more salt here. But y'all, it was so creamy. It was so delicious. I really, really think you're going to like this recipe. Just look at that. Isn't that pretty? So my butternut squash, it was kind of yellow. I guess, I guess it depends on the crop. I've seen butternut squash from Thrive that's bright orange, but mine wasn't. But it was delicious. The taste was there. It was just uh, kind of yellow. I'm going to leave y'all with my review. I hope you try this recipe and I hope you love it. This is so delicious. I'm not supposed to be eating rice because I'm on keto, but I, I just wanted to taste this and just share with you the sheer joy. If you love risotto, you will love this. The butternut squash, it's, um, there's a slight hint of sweetness to it. So it goes really well with the sage and that little, little, um, dash of cayenne pepper is perfect in there. I put a little bit more on it as I, as I dish this up a little bit black pepper these are um, chives from my garden and just a little bit more sage you know to make it fancy because we're being fancy today but it's so creamy it's so delicious and I hope y'all give this a try well thanks for joining me today and until next time y'all take care and keep thriving <laughs>